investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi folks, Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour on Thursday, the 14th of April, and we're looking at the Dow up 18. Let me just go through this very, very uh, methodically because it's a very important moment that we're at right now. You see on the left side here that on the 14th of March at 34,331, we made a leg D. And the very next day, we uh, had a lower close, which means you've made a peak D. And then the following session on the, this is market days, the 16th of, oh, was that March? Did I put in Feb? That should have been March. Sorry, that was the 13th of, 14th of March. So two days, two sessions later, what happened was, there was a big red candle, then a green candle, then a big red, and it just, it just sailed down. And it took out the midpoint of the rectangle. And that was really important because if you take out the midpoint of the re rectangle off the DEOF, higher highs in the Chapman methodology, it says that there's a really good chance that not only are you going to take out the left side low, that in this case 32,948, but you're going to go even lower. We've just seen that right here in the E-mini. We um, had, let me show you this right now. We had a, uh, a big spike on that 8.30 news, uh, economic news, big spike to a leg D, pulls back, and then it goes and inside. And what's the rule of, the, of a rectangle formation? If you start to make higher highs and higher lows, you can go all the way to a peak D, a fourth highest peak, just under, right on, or just above the previous high. And then you've got to be very careful because if there's a pullback, under the halfway marker, there's a really good chance that you're going to go all the way down to the all the way down to the to the rectangle low. Well, what happened is it kept testing, 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 broke slightly above it, and then it went down sharply, but it stopped at 41.24. It didn't go all the way down, and then it went to a very quick peak, A peak, B peak, C. To, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the one minute. E mini charge. I'd love to do this because it, it just it's like practicing your technique. And you know, like when I was playing uh, tennis yesterday, uh, there was a, we played outdoors for the first time in a long time because the weather was just fantastic. And but there was a wind, and that wind just changes things. Not only that, the sun in your eyes it just changes things from indoor. So there's a whole a panoply of 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 movements and techniques that you got to go through to get back to your stride to the pacing that you had. Well. What happened is this pullback uh, in the one minute chart after the peak D in an arch formation tested the left side low successfully. That was the low of 41.25.25 at uh, 9.37. And then because it was a successful test, it went to the halfway marker and then boom, it rallies where? It rallies peak A, peak B, peak C. It actually could be an alternate count. For now, I'm going to call it a C in the one minute chart. Um, and that is really good action. So the reason why I wanted to show you this chart, is, this is live. It's exactly the technique I'm talking about. So what we're looking at here is that the the Dow has now routed back into that former rectangle. Gosh, it's getting a little messy there. But I, I've kept it, I've kept all the notations. This is for subscribers to my opening call. It shows you the methodology in real time, what we're doing and why we're doing it. So we got to a leg D yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday, and I said, yesterday I said, if there is a move above whatever it is to extend leg D, that's good. But we are going to, because it's a, the technicals are very strong, we are going to do something just as a kind of a cautionary measure, a kind of a uh, uh, what if this happens, what if that happens. So we've kept the long, three times long position. We've added to and added to, and now we've kept that long position, <clears throat> taking a little bit off um, for uh, very short-term, well, very near-term gains. But I wanted the stop to be taken out to be able to say, now on this position, we've still got our longs from October, but this trading position, we're out of that right now. 
but it held. At the same time, I said, in the S&P, SBX, S&P, on the SPY, if I go to the SPY, what I want you to do was to, if the SPY did a certain action, and I gave it all day, we would buy the short position as insurance. And there are times every once in a while where every over the years where we have the two together, we are short and we are long on a very short term trading position. And one's going to get taken out and continue the direction or change the direction. It's just a simple way of doing it. It means for a day you pretty much are break even because you've got both the short and the long, but then you're taken out. I got a caller, I believe. Let me just go and check this. Oh, we have Bobby. Uh, we don't. We don't. We have Ari in Arcadia. Ari, how are you? I'm doing well, Basil. Good. You would like to uh, look at? I'd like to look at the uh, Wheaton precious so metal. You, and I'm kind of this... wondering if you look at the three-year chart, it shows yep, that, it's, that right it, it'll have. A, it'll show it's going to have a little congestion trying to get over 55. I like your opinion on that. So, folks, we're looking at WPM. This is Wheaton Precious Metals. I think it used to be Wheaton. Uh, what was the symbol before? WS something or other. Anyway. It was it's, uh, Go ahead. Right. So, Wheaton it was Precious Wheaton Metals. Silver metal. That's right. Yeah. So, um, we're looking at, look at the monthly chart. I draw drawn this in for Ari when he called last time. It was way lower than that. I think it was in the 43s when you spoke to me last time, or 42s. So, this is fabulous action. But this is a very interesting chart formation. I just need to make absolutely sure I haven't skipped a, a notation. 48, 47, 48, 50, 51. Yep, it keeps going up. So this gap up today of 3.4% after a move from the 38 level, we're at 52. Yesterday, we we're in, in, the, in the 50 area. Today, we're at 52.50 with a gap up. And if you're looking at the weekly chart, I'm calling this an F slash B, just to be sure that I, I, I'm covering um, F is the l latest notation, if I just continue the notation in the chapter wave alphabetically. But at the same time, I've got a trend line in the weekly chart that goes like this. And it says the 50, 55 to 50, it depends when it is. Right now, this week, it's in the 55s. That's a strong resistance area. That's just continuing the trend line. But this is what I'm really looking at. Let's go to the daily. You see the daily chart. You see the MACD. You see how the MACD has made this, I call it, this is a little, like, like a little porpoise with its mouth. The, the little nose keeps going up. So it's got an M-shaped formation. So deflected back up without even getting close to crossing negative. That's an important uh, perspective. The stochastic is at 83%. I prefer if it was at 88 to 91, but 80, 83 is very good. Uh, but it is starting to weaken a little bit. On balance volume, the little gray line there is very good. You had a huge, uh, uh, let me just do what this is. Yeah, on the six, when you made the peak D, volume was 25.6 million. Um, that's one of the highest volumes we've had. And now you've had follow through. And the uh, unbalanced volume has pulled back after being overboard. That's just the day. Hold on and we'll get to the weekly. Can you hold on? We'll get to the weekly and monthly because this is looking very good. We'll be back with yeah. Ari and Arcadia looking at WPM. Dow's up 79, S&P's up 23. So far, this is good action after yesterday. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back. We're back with Ariane RK. We're looking at WPM. Let me get the spec up again. During the break, I did a bunch of things. So I'm looking at this, and the way, I, the way it's unfolding is that the weekly chart now has a stochastic at 94%. Remember, that's what I was saying in the daily. I was expecting that, but it's the weekly. That's fabulous, actually. And the MACD has got this M-shaped pattern. The on-balance volume is a little overbought, but it's a fabulous move up. And so far, I have no, no reason why I can't call this a potential instant restart. And this is really more a leg B than an F, but I, I like to keep the alternate count because it's the daily that will tell you whether or not you need to make changes. And so far, the daily is very strong. But you remember, I spoke to you about this inside track repellent zone in the monthly chart with the high that was made back in 2020. I think that was uh, August. Yeah, August at 57.89. Pulled back very sharply, made a cup formation, and then made a lower high. And the high that was made in uh, May, no, it was April, a year ago. April, a year ago, it was at 51.91. Um, that gave me a trend line that I usually use, use it as a single line, and then I make a parallel line below it to say this is the inside track repellent zone. If it starts to move sharply above it, that becomes a propellant zone. And this is so far fantastic. And what you do in this particular pattern, you look at the left side high, that's the high that was made back in, what did I say, April it was, at 51.91. It's above that at 52.93, only a, a, a less than a point, but it's up. And the month is still got a long way to go in April. And if you, if you look at the left side high, the next high is that high that I was talking about back in August of 2020. So, so far, this is good, and you finally got the MACD crossing positive. You got the stochastic at 69%, and you've got, oh, I put the wrong earphone in. Let me just change that. And you've got the on balance volume very strong, perhaps a little bit overbought in the monthly chart. So that to me says this is excellent action, and that it's saying that any pullback will be. Uh, will be more the shorter term. It could even last six or eight weeks if there's a pullback after this huge move, move up. But you've got tremendous support now in the 46 to 43, or maybe even 42 area. 
And that's important to know because it says that if the MACD was to turn down, the stochastic was to turn down, it gives you a lot of room on the way down to say, okay, now I must take some profits off because the daily chart, obviously, if the daily chart starts to close under 47, that says, oh, okay, here comes this consolidation. So far, it's really good. The target I would have is that in, in terms of price, I haven't done any work right now, but it, it would extend out quite a bit more to give you a price and it would give you the target of October to get to 57. But the speed with which this is going, I probably would have to use a midpoint, a different one. I'd probably use the January midpoint and say, if this is the case, it's within the next six, six nine, I'd even maybe say three to four weeks that there should be some kind of a top in uh, Wheaton precious metals that is more a, a big digestive phase rather than just a pullback. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. It looks really good. I don't know what your plan is right now, but so far, and what I've said to people who have asked me about their, their gold and silver stocks that have gone exponential like this, I've said it's prudent money management-wise just to take a little bit off right here, or you can even split it into two, take something off as, you, as we're speaking, and then have a trading stop on another part. But keep your core position. You do not, at this point, I don't see any reason why you should change your core position, especially with the dollar pulling back like this. I don't know if that helps you. I appreciate Basil. And I just want to do one more thing. I want you to raise this. I always like, uh, I like to use my technicals as an indicator that's very flexible. It's, it's the, the actual indicator is fixed. But the way you use it needs to be, and that says that if I use it to the outer limits of the resistance levels in the weekly chart, right here at about 54.0, let's call it 53.90 to 54.30, um, that's where I see quite strong resistance on this trend line, and that's the one I'd be using right now. So I hope that's helping you because um, you you did the right things and. I don't want to. I don't want to change your thinking at in, at any point. But you asked me about that 55 level, and I'm saying to you, as we get closer to that 55 between 54 and 55, yes, there is strong resistance. If wheat and precious metals, in what are we April? If by June, wheat and precious metals is actually trading at 58 to 60, that is a breakout of tremendous significance. And I don't know what the dollar will be at the, at that point. But this is the way I'm looking at it so far. Very good, but I believe it's getting a little bit toppy in the short term. Thank you. That's that's why I asked you about the 55. Uh, I drew this congestion in 55. Yes, and, and and that's that's a that is definitely the icon, and it's the highest level it's been. I want to squeeze this. I can't remember. Yeah, it's had fantastic moves before, but from its 2005 beginning as wheat and precious metals, um, the, the last peak was right there, uh, April, oh, April, it loves April, April of 2011. It hit uh, 42.60, and that's peak A, B, C, D, E, F. Peak F, um, and then it pulled back really sharply and had like a pyramid pattern coming all the way back down to the 10 level, and it started off with a little doji low back in uh, October, November of 2008, in the 250 area. Yeah, so this is acting extremely well. It's a pattern we've seen before. It had the same same breakout back in 2011. There was this trend line. Looks exactly, oh, look at that. It looks exactly the same. So this is going to be important because it did break out and then it stalled. Oh, isn't this interesting? Huh? Thank you for bringing this up. It had this fabulous rally in uh, April of 2011 to 47.60, pulled all the way back for three three troughs. This is at one, two, three troughs as well. And it went in May of uh, 2012 to 22.94, ran up to a leg A, and then failed and made an arch formation. It came all the way back down. It went up to 41.30. So it failed. Uh, and so this is a really important moment. And it's also two big green... Oh, man. <laughs> this is... I never even noticed this... This is very similar to what happened before. What was the technicals doing? Oh, and the technicals, 
Oh, that's the big difference. In this case, the MACD failed. It it um, got repelled at the um, at that rally that occurred back going into the July, August. Uh, then it was September, and then October high of 2012. The stochastic could barely get to 80 percent, and then failed. And the MACD deflected lower without even cro barely crossing positive. Here you've got something very different. So the strength now, uh, there, what, there is a coincidence in the chart formation, but the technical strength now is way stronger. Whew, I'm pleased I did a thorough look at it because at first it looked very, like it was really similar. So anyways, acting very well, Ari. Congratulations. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Uh, folks, the Dow's up 124, SMB's up 26. This is not the action that you get after that pullback from yesterday. I'll talk about that as soon as we return. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. A couple of questions I've had, a couple of persistent questions, actually, and I didn't dismiss them at all. What I'd answered was, yes, this is in, this is in play. And the question was about Bitcoin. Now, uh, once upon a time, a few years ago, we got uh, the GBTC, which is the Bitcoin uh, Investment Trust. In, we got two positions, a short-term position, a long-term position, as two separate positions in the 12s, and it ran up. It was just fantastic. It ran up and ran up and ran up. It went all the way to the 38.71 level. Um, we were getting out of it, and then we got out completely. And then we got, uh, once or twice, we tried a, a little nibble to get in, and I didn't like it. <clears throat> and then um, 
So, oh, sorry, this is the move. It went up to 58. I'm saying to myself, 38? It was 58, it wasn't it? Yep, it was on the right. There it is, 58.21. And that was just a huge move, and that should have been an alternate count. No, it couldn't have been because we went lower down 366. Yeah, so now what we're looking at is after that move to 58, coming down to the 8th, and now it's trading at 17. That's a fabulous move. So the question was, is this a tradable instrument? And my answer was, I think it survived enough to say, yes, it is a tradable instrument, but I don't know if I'd put all my eggs in one basket. I'd, I'd have it so that if there was anything, I mean, I, it's it's really a fund, it's a trust, and you have to trust the trust. And at this particular point, all I can say, having survived this long, I think it's now, you know, all instruments need to go through a whole threshold of, of activity before you can really feel secure about them. This one, I think, has done that, and I think it is a a viable investment as a trade, I would treat it as a trade. I don't know about holding it for the very long term. I'm sure there are people that have it in the long term and bought it in the pennies. Obviously, that's fantastic. So let me just skip that part and say, at this particular point, what I'm looking at is um, GBTC trading at 17.56, up 49, has just made a doji candle from three days ago, a red candle yesterday, and a green candle today. My, the, the MACD is good, but it's not as good as it was. The stochastic's now under 80%. The on-balance arm is a tad overboard, and the relative strength is holding well. So the question is, is this the time to get into? Uh, is this the time to get into Bitcoin? You know, when it was trading in the eights, the nines and the eights, I said to myself, "Oh, what a perfect time." But the things I was reading, I, I, I don't usually get fooled by reading uh, stuff because I try to do my own homework. But it just seemed to say it needs a lot more testing. And I just, my only thing about it was um, th there's a way of, there's a way of reading this. There's a real value and then there's the, 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 the composite value. And I just couldn't tell if there was some underlying negativity that I, I was missing. So I just let it go. And it's, be, it's been a fabulous position to have if you've got it. Um, we've missed it. It's my fault. I, 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 it was on my list. But I just decided, you know, too many things have happened. Uh, I, I just need to step aside. But in that particular instance, that was wrong thinking because it proved itself. So all I can say is, yes, GBTC, I would, Gens, Gensis uh, GBTC was liquidated by Gemini. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. All right. So, so there, was, there was, obviously was, there was an issue. But as, a, as an instrument right now, I'd say yes, but I prefer to see how it pulls back and gets to the, between the 16 and the 15 area. That's where I would look at it again in a completely different way to say, is this now a rebuy? Uh, or, so for people who have not been in it, is this a buy? And it's also preferable if you've owned it before because you have to. You can only trade. You can't trade this overnight. Bitcoin futures you can. So I'd say just be real careful. So my what I'm I'm saying to you right now is your legs see in the weekly chart. Let's see if it can pull back into the. I prefer sixteen twenty or lower now and then. Let's look at it again and then ask me that question. Hope that helps. Next question. Oh, we got a, We got a caller. Mike in Ormond Beach. Mike in Ormond Beach. How are you? Hey, Basil, I'm doing great. Hey, Basil, I'm just wondering what your opinion is of interest rates. And uh, I'm looking at the TNF weekly chart, and um, it, it looks, I mean, to me, with my stochastic and everything, that it's in an area where it's, it's pretty oversold. And um, I know some people are thinking that the market is showing some short-term topping signs, you know, the Dow and everything. So what's your opinion of interest rates? So do, what, what you did you we, say you, you were looking at the T what? Oh, the T, TNX. TNX, For the, for yes. the bond yield. That's, that's the 10-year. T no yeah, deal. Yeah, the 10-year. Because when, okay. when, you know, when interest so, goes and up, folks, that goes up with it. Right, the TNX folks is the one that uh, yeah interest rates, you know, things like uh, credit card and all that, uh, automobile loans. That's kind of where that's the benchmark for that, not the thirty year, thirty years for housing. 
So if you look at this chart here that I show my subscribers every weekend uh, with the black background, on the left here is the weekly T. Uh, this is the three. I call this my triple yield weekly bond chart. And what it has uh -huh. is the white is the TYX. That's the 30-year T bond. The 10-year is the T note TNX. And the five-year, and that's brown, and the cyan is five-year T note yield, FVX. And the big cup formation that made the cup and handle broke out to the top and then came back in. I have to tell you something. As I look at this and I look at this and I, I know I know what the Fed's supposed to do. I know I, I know all the things that I hear and my eye says, mm -hmm. but wait a minute, there's something else going on. So I'm just going to add this because it's here. The Wood, the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF has had a, a really good rally from the low and it's back under the 200 period moving average. So that's stalling. That's international. That's international business, global timber and forestry. High grade copper, which is not here, is, is pretty much the same chart. And this is the Philadelphia Housing Index, which had a really good rally and is still holding pretty well off the low. So when I try to put the whole thing together, I say, what a dichotomy of, of instruments and things that we're looking at. Now I'm going to go to, <clears throat> you know, I talk about the rectangle formation, how prices can remain within a rectangle uh, formation for a long time before right. they either Makes break up crazy. or break down. <laughs> So if you look at the TLT, your question is on the TNX. I'm just using the TLT, which is the 20-year th Treasury bond ETF. It also has 30-year. Uh, it has a longer duration. So 109.68 was the high of the week of the 9th of December. And the low that we used is the low of, Feb of March, the week of the 3rd at 98.88. And look how it's been stuck in this range. And that's my contention. At this particular point, and I'm saying this particular point, meaning there's an implication that it could go on for quite a bit longer because a long rectangle, mm -hmm. for, uh, no, a, rect a large rectangle formation, the longer it extends to the side, it becomes a narrow rectangle formation. And this is what it's becoming. And it says you can trade in that range, the range that I just gave you, like let's call it just for, for 100 to 110 to 99. It can stay in that range a lot longer than your patience. So I right. don't think that that's really the issue. If you're talking about the economy, look at this race. I came across this last night purely by chance. I completely forgot about it. This is Ferrari. All time highs in the Ferrari, and you know the wealthy or the people. Maybe in the Rolls Royce, that's a little different. But in the in the uh, in the Ferrari area, yeah, you know, the folks who have the most money are the ones that very quickly withdraw and don't and don't overspend. It's it's funny how that mm -hmm. works. So this is unusual. Look at the one that I mentioned yesterday. Burger. This is the uh, let's go. This is Burger's first source. Eagle. This is. This, uh, this is the carrier building, all-time high. I'll be back. Can you hold on? Yes. We'll be back with Mike and Ormond Beach. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. 
Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. So what I was doing is I was uh, speaking to Mike at Ormond Beach. Uh, so Mike, what I, I'm really saying to you is that, isn't it interesting that when we're talking about interest rates and I can bring up to you, the, the, the I mean, when I talk about a bifurcated market, can you get something as crazy as this? Builder's first source, let me just go back here and see something here, Builder's first source, uh, Inc. Uh, let me put this in the bill, builders first source does. Okay, here we go. Uh, build, builders first is the nation's largest supplier of structural building products, value added mm -hmm. components, and services to the professional market for single family and multi family construction and repair and remodeling. I mean, I all-time highs, and when you yeah. look at Sintas, <clears throat> which is the the one I often talk about in terms of over the decade, not years, but decades, that I look at it to tell me what's going on in the economy. Yes, it made a peak D just recently, a couple of weeks ago. It's pulled back quite sharply, and it was a double top at 47, 470 uh, December of. Uh, 2022, retested it again at 469, uh, 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 just over a dollar away from the previous high, and that was in March of 2023, and it's still holding extremely well. It's a peak C1, maybe even a peak C2 in the in the in the monthly chart. Overalls, uniforms, rentals, there is something I don't know how the Fed can even make decisions because. Whatever data they're looking at, on the this is what you always I always think of economists like you have to have two hands to be an economist because you, you, you got to say, on the one hand this, and then, the, then on the other hand that, and this is what right. we're looking at. And you can give a valid, a really valid excuse to say, well, uh, interest rates should rise because there's demand. Look at that. You've got the overalls, uniforms, almost at an all-time high. Um, you've got URI, and let me just see URI pull back quite sharply. That's rentals. But just recently, it was at an all-time high in the 480 level. Now it's at 370. So you've got such a crazy market. So I'm going to, so I guess your question really is, where, where do I think interest rates are going? And is, right. there, is there an abnormality? Is there some kind of uh, a one-off that's just going to say, whoa, uh, who expected that? And the answer is, in this particular market, look, I just read about, I mean, we just heard moments ago that in, in uh, Florida, there was a, a two feet two feet worth of rain yesterday. I mean, two, yeah. I can't even imagine. Where do, where do you put the water, two feet worth of rain? It's a 1,000-year thing. I remember here in Newton, just where I live, um, the tennis courts at the local, at the Newton North High School, they redid the courts saying, oh, yeah, we'll do it right across the stream. Underneath there was a stream because there's a hundred year storm and we had one about whatever number of decades ago. The very next year, 
that that winter or whatever it was or summer we had a hundred we had another huge storm that had to redo the courts again so all i can say the aberrations that we're looking at says to me stick with the chart and the chart is saying right now we are stuck in the tlt weekly chart between 110 and 99 until we break mm -hmm. to the upside decisively to about 112, which means that yields will go down sharply or break under right. it to go to maybe 97 for yields to really spiral higher. I think this is not the issue. I think there are other issues that we're looking at. Maybe crude oil spikes much higher. You know, we've got a lot of things going on. And, I, and uh, what is gold telling us about the XLF? That's probably the thing that we cannot ignore, that the financials, um, you, I, I want the financials to do well. I don't want to see the financials uh, hovering over. Where did the, can I use my mouse? To, what happened here? Uh, mouse, mouse. If I type in something, let me just type it in here. I don't even know where it's going. Um, okay. So, the, oh, there it is. Okay. So the XLF trading right now at um, 32.35, way off the 37 high that was made back in April. To me, that's an issue. The fact that you've mm -hmm. got the IAI, the broker dealer index, also in that same category. So I think we have to look at this and say, and this is what I've tried to do for subscribers, is to try to go under the radar, look at things that are perhaps not directly involved into those things that are weakest, like the financials, although at some point if the financials are weakest and they affect everything. But I can't answer you directly other than to say, hey, I've been talking about this for about a, a couple of months now, and it seems mm -hmm. absolutely nuts that, that the TLT since November or December has been in this trading range, and so that's uh, four months. It's stuck in a trading range. So all I can say to you, stuck in a trading range means there's a good chance it can continue stuck in the trading range. So I, I'm unable to answer you other than to say short term 108.47 is the resistance of the 200 period moving average, which has been working for quite some time now in the TLT. If it closes above that, then we'll see how it, how it will retrace towards that 110 level. I hope that kind of answers it my way. I'm not sure if that's the answer. <laughs> Yeah. You want well, that's that, that's what I was wondering, Basil. If you know what what you saw and your you know what you saw, and you pretty much pointed it out that uh, you know the trading range and the TLT once it breaks either to the upside or or the downside, that's going to be you know our our answer pretty much. So now the, one other and, thing I'm going to mention when I talk about patterns, there is a propeller shaft pattern right now. That says uh -huh. from the 91.85 low back in uh, October or November of last year to this 100, let's call it 110 for now. If there's a breakout to the upside, I'm just going to put this in here and I'll put it in, in, in just gray just to say this is what would happen is that there could be a move to 115 and that would be um, that would have yields come down very sharply. I don't think it's ready right. for that, but I'm just going to put it in, and I'll put it in. I can't put it into a bracket because it looks so weird, but I'll put it in. I'll make a dash so it's just really faint, and I'll put it, and I'll make a note. This is the day that we spoke, and I'll put it in right here. Uh, what was the day that, what is today? Today's the 4, uh, 13, 13, 23, and I'll put us in, and I'm going to put a mic at uh, 10. 50 a.m. <laughs> and we'll see what happens. And the TLT okay. is uh, T, uh, I'll put in TLT at 106. I'm not saying it's going there. I'm just saying that if it does break out, that's the pattern that right. I'd be looking at. And uh, But I, at this point, I just see it stuck. Not only that, if it actually starts to go to 103, then you're going to have the arch formation, and that could turn down sharply. No. That's the way I'm looking at it. Let's see what happens. It's going to be a fascinating couple of weeks coming up. Yeah, and, and, and like you said, Basil, there's a lot of conflicting things. I I I've, I've have a, a thing on my computer. It's Indeed Job Search, and yep. I'm in the Central Florida area. Um, I'm about 50 miles north of Orlando, right near Daytona Beach. And and I even uh, sent a screenshot of this to Tommy a couple months ago. There's hundreds of jobs 
um, available. And some are Amazon delivery jobs. There's Amazon delivery here is still hiring too. So, yeah, no, I, I think it's very interesting. So thank you All very right, well, much for you. calling. Always appreciate speaking with you. That's Mike in Florida. Dow's up 107. Thank you for calling. Dow's up 107. SP's up 24. I'll be back because I want to give a summation. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just one dollar for the year there's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders in the tiger's den you can look over the shoulders of tom o'brien and the other tfnn hosts while they analyze charts during their live tiger tv programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas news analysis and discuss the market action all trading day even at night and on the weekends the tiger Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I thought I'd just grab a naked chart. Just uh, all it's got is the uh, candles. I like to use candles only because it gives me a lot of information, but I'm only counting the highs and the lows, so it's really the bars that I need. But that's not the point. The point is, let me just find if I can find... I. I did this at the last minute. So this will be the low that I'm looking at right now. So the E-mini is up 25. Uh, first of all, this is just not the action that you'd expect after yesterday's, uh, if we we're going to be continuing lower down. So the 10 minute chart, so here's the 10 minute chart with notations. It's gone from a peak A, pulls back. It looked like it was going to be like yesterday's single leg up failure pattern, but instead it held beautifully on the 200 period moving average. Now it's moving high, peak B. There should be a C and a D, and this could be a two-click session that after that 8.30 uh, report, um, you could have, if you were in at 41.20, you don't have to click until later on in the day. That's just the kind of session that it could turn out to be. We've had a number of those recently. I'll talk about it more maybe tomorrow and then and next week. Maybe we'll have a whole bunch of try to do two-click sessions, either up or down. 
means that there could be a, a one buy and then you can do, go off and put in your stock. Don't worry about it. In the afternoon, you can come out and take take whatever it is if there's a good move up, especially if the nine period has moved sharply above the 14 period in the 10 minute chart. But in the meantime, just let me do this. Um, you see there's a trend line that I could use right here. You don't have to have all this stuff, all this the techniques, but it's saying that by... Uh, 1340. So that's 140. By, by about two o'clock, there should be an attempt to touch 4154. 4154 is the height it was made at 230 yesterday before that sharp decline. Um, the key support at this particular point would be 4134 to 4130. That's key support if there's a failure. So I'll leave you with that and have a wonderful day. And uh, let's see what happens uh, with the period of the session. That is.